Good morning and a very warm welcome to everyone present on the Q2 FY24 earnings conference call for Tarsons Products Limited. Along with me today, I am joined by Mr. Sanjeev Sehgal, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Santosh Agarwal, Chief Financial Officer and Compliance Officer for Tarsons Products Limited, and SGA, our Investor Relation Advisors. We have updated our quarterly investor presentation on the stock exchanges and company's website. I hope you all had an opportunity to go through the same. Currently, the life science sector is facing a de-acceleration driven by factors like global geopolitical tensions, economic downturns, and a slowdown in various life science activities. These issues have repercussions on funding, research initiatives, and market dynamics. Additionally, the industry has grappled with excess inventory accumulation over the past four quarters, which is now gradually being addressed. Despite these challenges, we perceive them as temporary obstacles. As the industry undergoes a resurgence, we are optimistic about reaping rewards due to Tarson's robust brand, diverse customer base, and expansion into new product categories. About the quarterly performance, traditionally, the life science industry, particularly for Tarsons, has witnessed its strongest performance in Q4 after that followed in Q2. However, as previously mentioned, the industry has not fully recovered and uncertainties persist, impacting our revenue growth. In Q2 FY24, our revenues reached 66 crores, showcasing a growth of around 6% compared to the preceding quarter. Despite the overall industry experiencing negative growth, Tarsons has managed a 6% growth. With the industry poised for a rebound, we anticipate securing even higher market share and further improving our performance. Speaking on the EBITDA front, the reported EBITDA margin for Q2 FY24 stood at 38.3%. This was impacted on account of lower revenue growth and GP margin leading to a negative operating leverage pay, increase in the cost on account of manpower and marketing expenses which we believe are investments to fuel future growth opportunities. While this proactive strategy paves the way for future growth, it does result in a temporary increase in operational costs. Lastly, increased expenses on account of the upcoming facility for which the revenues will start coming from next financial year. However, we anticipate that margins will improve once the industry begins to recover and a new facility begins operations. On the CapEx front, firstly on uh, Parshla, as you all know, Parshla is set to introduce cell culture and expand capacity for our existing product lines. The civil construction has been completed and our inaugural clean room is ready. While we await the arrival of certain machines, which are currently in transit, the initial production is projected to commence in Q3 FY24. But additionally, the phased commercial production of cell culture and other products is anticipated to start in Q1 of FY24, FY25. Also, in our arm plant, we are in the process of constructing a radiation plant and have formally signed a memorandum of understanding with the Board of Radiation and Isotope Technology for this purpose. This strategic move aims to reduce our dependence on a single source in West Bengal. Additionally, construction is underway for a central warehouse operation. This will enable us to attain efficiencies in our inventory management and our overall global operations. I am pleased to provide you an update on the establishment of Tarsons Life Science PTE Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of Tarsons in Singapore. This subsidiary is dedicated to undertaking strategic investment initiatives aligned with Tarson's core business. These initiatives include <laughs> the acquisition of companies, formation of joint ventures, establishment of strategic partnerships, and other business arrangements essential to Tarson's overseas business objectives. This strategic move is a testament to our commitment to harnessing growth opportunities within the export market. 
our strategy has been to enter these markets by acquiring a brand which is already present in those markets to act as a stepping stone or an entry point into that market and then grow and penetrate the market organically. These acquisitions can either be channel or distribution led companies or an existing brand with limited presence, size and scale. In that context, while pursuing these opportunities, we acknowledge associated costs as integral to our strategy. We incurred a similar cost up to the tune of 80 lakhs in Q2 FY24, which partially impacted our margins. However, these costs represent investments needed to realize our expansion goals and enrich our business endeavors. We are actively evaluating acquisition to strengthen our global footprint and expedite our journey towards accelerated growth. Before handing the call over to Santosh, in the future, our goal is to surpass industry growth by expanding our market share and enhancing our st uh, the strength of our brand. Tarsons through the introduction of new product categories from our upcoming facility. We are actively executing our strategy to establish a comprehensive presence in all our business segments of the life science industry, capturing substantial share of the Indian market and solidifying our footprint in the international overseas markets. With this, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Santosh Agarwal, CFO for Tarsons, for his comments and financial highlights. Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our Q2 FY24 earning calls. On the revenue front, revenue from operations for Q2 FY24 stood at 63 crore as compared to 63 crore in Q1 FY24. Revenue from operation for H1 FY24 stood at 129 crore as compared to 144 crore rupees in H1 FY23. For Q2 FY24, revenue from export stood at 23 crore and domestic at 43 crore. For Q2 FY24, export sales contributed around 35% and domestic sales contributed around 65%. At a gross profit level, our gross profit for Q2 FY24 stood at 50 crore rupees as compared to 47 crore in Q1 FY24. Our gross profit for H1 FY24 stood at 97 crore as compared to 109 crore in H1 FY23. Our GP margin for Q2 FY24 stood at 75% approx. At a beta level, our beta for Q2 FY24 stood at 25 crore as against 21 crore in Q1 FY24. Our beta for H1 FY24 stood at 47 crore as against 64 crore in H1 FY23. Our beta margin for Q2 FY24 stood at 38.3 percent approx. At a PAT level, profit after tax for Q2 FY24 was 13 crore with PAT margin of 19.3 percent. PAT for H1 FY24 was 22 crore with PAT margin of 17.4 percent. I would like to highlight that despite the challenging environment, we have been able to maintain a healthy cash flow for our company with cash generated from operations standing at 59 crore for H1 FY24 as compared to 47 crore in H1 FY23, representing our ability to strengthening our working capital cycle. With this, I would like to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. The first question is from the line of J.V. Shikawat from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Sure. Thanks. Uh, good morning, team. My first question is to Mr. Sanjeev Sagal. So, sir, over the last two years, uh, we understand you have seen a lot of challenges, both macro and micro. So, could you talk about micro and company level challenges that you've seen over the last two years and areas where you believe you could have done better? And also, how do you see the next two to three years evolve as those challenges subside? Right. So, um, uh, this is Rohan here. I'll just answer it on his behalf. Uh, it's basically, I think, uh, macro level challenges are very well known. I think uh, the post COVID era has been very sluggish for the life science industry with demands uh, not being up to the mark and inventory levels being at an all time high. And uh, in terms of uh, company level challenges, I think the ability to be able to navigate through uh, the COVID environment and being able to uh, execute uh, the plants and the various projects at Pachla, being able to uh, uh, 
you know, the project management with suppliers navigating through problems of COVID and then the geopolitical problems in Europe has been, have been quite challenging. So I think being able to get the projects uh, ready and up to production uh, through this COVID period or, or through over the last 24 to 36 months have been uh, very challenging uh, as compared to the pre-COVID era. Sure. And also in terms of your new product lines, both PCR and Calcalcula, could you talk about the kind of response that you might have already started receiving and your expectation of incremental revenues from these in, say, FI25, when both of these lines will be active? So, uh, PCR line is uh, pretty much active at this point of time, but uh, the revenue base has been quite sluggish considering, uh, uh, you know, a lot of overhang from COVID and large, um, uh, you know, inventory base globally for these product lines. For cell culture, we do, uh, since the products are not launched and we, we have not been able to sample these products to key customers, we have absolutely no uh, uh, update about these product lines from our customers. Right, but your early expectation in terms of what kind of opportunity it could open up for you, especially in FI25 and 26? So all we can say is that uh, we're looking at installed capacity of both these product lines in excess of uh, $10 million, closer to the 100 crore mark, and we look to scale that up over a three to four year period. Right, and Rohan, could you highlight how much of the overall CAPEX has gone into expanding your existing facility, which is not the new product, but something that you might have already been manufacturing? Out of the overall expansion, let's both answer that uh, question. Yeah. Uh, see, we we are running with a capex of uh, about to be 550 crore rupees. Out of that, we already incurred 400 crore rupees. It's a mix of both the expanded capacity as well as the cell culture product. But I will say, uh, if you talk about the breakup, approximately 60 percent belongs to uh, expanded capacity and 40 percent belongs to new products. Right. And so this 40 and 40 is for the product line. So out of this, um, you know, about 40, 40% 40 belongs to infrastructure, building and infrastructure. Right. So just to understand that better, that 60% is where you're talking about in expanding the existing facilities. How much of that will go into, say, expanding your actual production capacity and how much would go to infrastructure? So out of this 550 crores, more than uh, 200 and uh, 200 250 crores would go into land building, infrastructure, clean rooms, ancillary equipment, uh, and so on, which is not directly proportionate to output, which is molds, machines, automation, and so on. Sure, because when I see your inventory position currently, it's roughly about 120 odd crores as of September end, and if I were to assume that right. steady state 75 percent is gross margin, I think you're already sitting on 450 to 500 crores of inventory. So, I mean, I was just trying to understand the rationale behind expanding even your existing capacities across your plants, given that you already have enough inventory on hand. So, your your sir, observations are all there. Sir, I am giving the reply on, on behalf of Rohan. So, currently, we are holding inventory of 118 crore rupees. So, we need to see what is the breakup of that. Uh, raw metal account for about to be 40, about to be 39 crore rupees. We have a, we, uh, currently, raw metal supply is facing a lot of problems. Because because of the implementation of uh, one of the concept called B, uh, and uh, government is government government is not allowing all kind of imports uh, without having the, without having that kind of certification. So we need to in, we need to keep the raw materials enough in advance. Apart from that, we have finished goods of about the 45 crore and we need to keep four to five months of inventory uh, to to run this operation. Apart from that, we have packing materials of about to be seven crore rupees, consumable store of two crore rupees. And then we have work in progress of about to be 14 gold pay. So these inventories are required to run these operations, right? So this has nothing to do with the upcoming capex. Of course, upcoming capex will, if it, if it increase the revenue, then this inventory can be optimized. Sure. And lastly, my question is on your margins. So your beta margins have come down to below 40 percentage versus, say, the 45 percentage plus that we had seen last year and the year prior to that. So where do you see these margins sort of settling over, say, over the next two quarters and even in, say, FI25, when you will also have the newer capacity sort of come in? Right. So, uh, see, we, we are down about six crores in revenue uh, in this quarter uh, as compared to the last, uh, the same quarter last year. So I think a large role would be played on the top line. 
because the company is um, uh, it is not downsizing based on uh, lower revenues. The company is only expanding and upsizing for the future. So it uh, we we are not seeing um, uh, EBITDA loss due to uh, prices going down or lo- loss of market share. It is mainly on the loss of revenue because of uh, you know lower uh, market conditions currently present. So it all depends on the top line. It's uh, pr- pretty directly proportional to the top line. And uh, we have a very neg- negligible one-time expense, which uh, should not continue over the o- over to the next year. So uh, apart from that, everything else will remain the same. And just to add what Rohan said, <coughs> if you compare the EBITDA of, the EBITDA of last six months and compare to this month, we are down by about, uh, down by about to be 17 crore rupees. And if you see the breakup, the metal profit down uh, contributed about to be 12.5 crore rupees and employee cost contributed about to be 1.8 crore rupees right so as a company we control the uh, control the cost in a very care- in a very careful way sure i think this is very helpful wish you all the best thank you thank you thank you <laughs> before we take the next question a reminder to all participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question uh, next question is from the line of Manoj Paheti from Carnelian Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Thanks for taking my question. Am I audible? Yes, yes. sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. yeah so, uh, just to take the question of uh, previous participant further, I just wanted to understand like this 550 crore kind of capex which we are taking and that too in current uncertain time. Uh, so and uh, like when you are uh, even struggling to uh, uh, completely utilize uh, your existing capacity, I just wanted to understand the rationale of such a big capex. And secondly, uh, also wanted to understand like when doing this capex, what kind of IRR ROC level you are looking. So this is my first question. So, uh, the CAPEX is not uh, implemented today during certain times. The CAPEX was implemented uh, in the range of two and a half, three years back. And uh, today we are in the verge of completion of this CAPEX over the next few months. Mm -hmm. Uh, The times today are uncertain. And, uh, of course, the company is um, in tune with the industry, which is not going too well at this point of time. But as I said in uh, in introductory speech that... uh, uh, these uncertain times look temporary, and it looks as if uh, things would rebound to pre-pandemic levels, and uh, uh, the industry should have uh, good growth moving forward. And uh, we are pretty certain about uh, the opportunities what our company will have, both in the domestic and international market. And uh, based on that certainty and based on that conviction, we undertook this uh, capex plan uh, way back, you know, in 2020, 21. So, and just to add, and just to add, in 2021, 20, our ROE was about to be 32%, and ROC was 34%. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. So that's what I was wondering whether, like, with this kind of incremental allocation of capital, whether you will be able to reach back to that kind of ROC, ROE in near future, or is there something structurally which has happened in the industry, either on account of increase in competitive intensity? Uh, which may not lead to that kind of ROE, ROCs. So there has been an increase in comparative intensity since COVID, uh, but uh, it is yet to be seen over the next two to three years whether this comparative intensity is uh, there to be, you know, is supposed to be permanent or it was just uh, during the COVID wave when the demand was at an all-time high. But at this point of time, uh, it's very difficult to say whether we'll be able to reach back the 30 to 34%, but definitely we would not be in the current level, what we are at in ROC and ROE. But definitely if the volume in the industry revives, if the volume increase, uh, our ROC and ROE will be better. The second thing is uh, like uh, almost 40% of your capex is towards new products. So whenever these kind of competitive intensity goes up, uh, means as a company, if you are moving to like more complex new products, you can prevent, means you can create some kind of entry barrier. So is your company moving in that direction or is it an industry where the entry barriers are not there uh, and these kind of ROEs and ROCs are not sustainable? 
No, I think we sustained it for about a few decades. So I'm not sure whether it's sustainable in the future, but in the past we sustained it for a few decades. And uh, we kept competition, um, you know, with uh, all the competition globally and internationally. We were not the first company to enter into this space. We maintained our margins above 40% for more than 25 years. So I'm not sure about the future, but I can talk about the past, what we've done historically. The future is, uh, you know, something which I've not seen. Uh, just last question from my side. Uh, on the new products, if you can give some color, whether that uh, is a little bit complex products like cell culture is one of the things where you are um, uh, introducing. So whether that kind of products will give you some kind of moat or some kind of entry barriers to you and also timelines. Uh, in terms of utilization of your new capacity, like in next two, three, four years, what is uh, the time frame when you will see uh, capacity, uh, capacity utilization to go to optimum level? So uh, the market says that cell culture products is more, uh, uh, you know, is more complex, um, and we see that in building the product line as well. That uh, there are technologies which are not very open and not very known which makes it a little more difficult to manufacture products like cell culture as compared to the other plastic labware products. And uh, customer acceptance is also a little more uh, tricky, I would say, as compared to normal products because customers don't want to uh, trust a lot of brands with their cells as compared to the brands they've been using. So in that way, it could be, uh, you know, a little bit of a stronger mode. And uh, we expect to scale up in four to five years, uh, you know, completely ramp up to 100% of uh, available capacities, which I've mentioned earlier. For all our product lines that we are launching, uh, the target is four years, uh, maybe five, to ramp up completely. And your asset turnover is around 0 0.7, right? Asset turnover is 0 0.7, yes. But this is gross asset, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks for taking my questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next question is from the line of Yash Malhotra from JM Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Yeah, what would be your current optimization level for each of the labs, if you could go through it? For, uh, could you repeat your question, please, for each of what? Each of your manufacturing facility. So, uh, see, the thing is, in each of our facilities, we are producing about 2,000 SKUs. So, each of our facility, uh, you know, uh, we produce more than uh, four, 500 SKUs each. So, it's very difficult to give you a percentage, but uh, I would say that, uh, you know, on, on a broad level, we would be at about, you know, the mid-70s on uh, uh, the capacity levels. Uh, mid-70s occupied with about uh, 20, 25 percent. So, we... <laughs> like if we do about 300 crores of revenue, without our 550 crore of capex, we have the ability to do about 50 to 60 crore more of revenue with our existing setup. I can give you a broad level number like that, but um, line by line, SQ by SQ, because there are so many permutation combinations, there's not a right answer or a clear answer. Correct. Um, and in terms of your announcement, which is going to come late October, I believe, uh, with respect to radiology, what's the update on that? So you are talking about the radiation plant, right, sir? Correct. So radiation plant, uh, uh, the the, uh, the construction is in process. We already got the approval from the uh, from the government, and once the construction will be over, then we can start we we, we can start doing the radiated products kind of manufacturing. So we expect the construction to be completed by the end of December or first week of January and post that there would be an audit uh, by the same agency uh, and they would uh, audit the entire facility and on approval we can uh, proceed forward and then the CO60, Cobalt 60 source would be transported to us and then installed in our facility and then we are good to go. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star N1 to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Amar Moria from Alp Accurate Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, so thanks a lot for the opportunity. A couple of questions from my side. So firstly, uh, if you can give me uh, what is the total contribution from the government institutions uh, in our revenue? 
So about 14 to 15 percent of the domestic revenue, which is about 65 percent of the total revenue. So meaning you're saying 14 to 15 percent of the overall revenue or 14 to 15 percent no. of the domestic domestic revenue? 14 to 15 percent of the domestic revenue, which is 65 percent of the total revenue. Okay. So basically 9 percent, 10 percent of the overall revenue. That is what you're saying. Correct. Correct. Okay. And uh, secondly, sir, uh, what would be the contribution of PET and PETG in this particular first half? And uh, is there any revenue coming from, uh, you know, Seroj, uh, peptide business, the new CAPEX which we did? So, uh, there, there is uh, some uh, business coming in from PET, PETG, uh, some business coming in from pipettes, which are all a part of our existing CAPEX, but major part of our CAPEX uh, revenue is yet to be realized. Uh, I don't have the numbers in hand of the exact value of the business what we've done, but we can send it back to you uh, by email of PET and PETG. And just to add, uh, we, we launched PTG models and surgical PET pipettes. All the, we got passed all the validation test and all the approval from all the institutes. And we even got some international order also, right? And things are going very well on that on that front. So because why I'm asking this, sir, you know, FY23, when we were yet, we were about to launch PET and PETG, we were looking for a decent contribution of revenue in FY24. So I'm just trying to understand that is that started or it is yet to start or it got delayed? The production is ready uh, for uh, PEG bottles, and uh, we are moving forward with that in the domestic as well as international market. So it's ready to ship. It's ready to ship. Okay. Yeah. And sir, basically one more question on the new KPX. So new KPX, like you know, as we said, 550 crore is the total KPX. Out of that, basically the revenue facing KPX is only 350 crore kind of thing. Right. Uh, right. right, and out of that, 300 also, between 300 to 350 crore. Yeah, yeah. and Mota Moti, you know, 0.7 to one time kind of a asset turnover, which we are targeting, right? So right. if we do that, right. match, then basically what we arrive with at around say 20 to 20 percent kind of a ROC. So what I'm trying to understand is that how we will be sustaining then this uh, high ROC, and I believe the high ROC which we were having is not because, is because of the index adjustment, right? Yeah, it is because that adjustment plus the incremental capex will be at a very high ROC because we've built infrastructure for more than 350 crore of capex. We've built infrastructure for almost double this capex, which will not have infrastructure costs of building land, uh, utilities, and so on. And revenue will keep on increasing year on year, but you know, capex will not increase in the same proportion, right? So asset and ratio going forward will be better. So I'm saying, uh, so are you saying that this base capex of 350 or 550 once it is launched, once you will do an incremental capex on this, then the ROCs will accrue. That is what you're saying? Yeah, because it will not have the in initial costs of purchasing the land, building the building, building the infrastructure and so on. That is all included in this capex, yeah. So other way to understand this question is basically let's say to hit a 30% ROC, uh, how much incremental hmm. capex you have to do on this base asset? We have not calculated that and uh, uh, we are trying to build a business uh, which is going to you know, be a globally strong business. We have not really done. We, uh, a very strong ROC has been uh, you know, an, uh, an after effect of doing things rightly, but we do not plan uh, projects based on ROC uh, returns. And, uh, and you know, with the existing capacity and the upcoming capacity, we can touch a revenue of about to the 700 to 800 crore rupees, right? If we touch that that kind of turnover with this kind of capacity, suppose, of course, this kind of ROC is possible. Okay, got that. And sir, the export business or the international business uh, which we would be looking to acquire, uh, I am assuming that would be a advanced product or it would be a similar kind of product? category which we are doing today? It would uh, be for similar kind of products only. Okay. So any reason? The overlap will be, uh, we, would, we, would need, we would need perfect overlap. We cannot go with products if we don't have. Okay. So basically so that is more the range to the do of 70 to 80%. Okay. So that the is more to do the range of 70 to 80%. Okay. And, and so that is more to do with the 
कस्टमर अप्रूवल देन वी विल लुकिंग टू बी बी लुकिंग टू एक्वायर कस्टमर इन न्यू एक्विजिशन एंड देन वी विल सोर्सिंग द प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम हियर टू देयर yeah i can't give so much of details on a call for something which is not been done but uh, we are looking to uh, you know build a base in international markets to grow our international revenue i got it thank you sir thank you thank you thank you a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask a question our next question is from the line of harshmul chandani from chris portfolio please go ahead thank you for the opportunity uh so your opening remarks you mentioned that you know market has degrown versus you know we uh, demonstrated 6% growth so that's a good uh, for us but just want to understand where do you see the market from year on going because now i believe market is stabilized more or less over year so is it because of destocking or is it because of demand or it is because of some other reason switch to some alternatives which is leading to flattish growth or uh or a combination of these uh, factors and what could be uh, you know the likelihood of market recovering going forward so uh, we are looking at a whole you know at various factors um, uh, in this play, in this entire thing firstly the market has begun to recover slightly uh, with de stocking happening at a faster pace than what it happened 6-8 uh, months back so more and more inventory is getting liquidated from the system which is a good sign uh so um uh, we see the industry when we mention that the industry is not done as well as just a culmination of other uh, numbers which we get globally for listed companies which you know whose numbers are available on the public domain um i think uh, uh getting more and more market share over the next 6 to 12 months from international players because manufacturing in europe uh, is going through a lot of crisis at this point of time with uh, not not the right place to manufacture with uh, product production costs going at an all time high and people getting more and more cost sensitive post pandemic you know gives us a good opportunity to take advantage of being in india so i think uh, along with the slow recovery of the industry uh, which is a which is a good sign at least there's a recovery and uh, being in the right place in india being able to have good economies of scale now with the new facilities coming up and uh, being at a very opportunistic time where uh, we can convert uh, customers from uh, you know uh, bigger european brands because people are more price sensitive post this Uh, covid pandemic era i think should play well for us as a company in the next few uh, quarters got it okay and a uh, couple of questions on expansion which was supposed to go live this year the timelines are intact right. or uh, there is some yes uh, as i mentioned in the opening remarks we expect the first uh, commissioning to start in the month of december which is next month in q3 fy24 and this is the beginning and then from here over the next 7 to 8 months maybe 9 months i cannot put an exact number you would have commissionings every week and uh, uh, you know every two weeks because there will be about 15 to 16 different commissionings before the plant is completely ready uh, for, you know when the, when i say the plant is completely ready the plant is completely ready till the signed capex of ours there would still be a lot of space for future capex but uh, so i expect uh, this to be the beginning you know december the middle of middle of december to be the beginning and then of course there would be a layoff for four weeks because most of our commissioning happens from europe and us and people don't work from 24th 23rd december to about 14 15 jan and then 15 jan onwards you'd see more commissioning starting got it so so the revenues would start from the next fiscal uh typically i would say i would say even we can expect some revenue from q4 as well uh, uh but major revenues of course from uh, in fy25 got it and uh, the international acquisition which you are planning to make how hard are you looking for that acquisition like is it like something is there you already have for evaluation or you are just keeping it your eyes open for if something comes by no i since uh, you know uh, since we mentioned very clearly about the quantum of money we've spent it is beyond uh, just looking at acquisitions we are deeper into uh, the process uh, of uh, being able to shortlist companies and you know work with those companies to see if there's a fit between our company and their company so that is all i can say at this point of time we are uh, very active in this process and uh, we believe that this would be uh, you know a good catalyst for our growth in the overseas market so we are you know strongly looking into this uh, area 
Got it. Okay. And just my last question, the guidance for 500 crore, would any changes to that? Uh, because I think last few quarters we've been, you know, hanging on to that number still. Uh, so, right. it, uh, so now do we see that? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be giving a, I wouldn't be giving a revised guidance for sure, but, uh, looking at, uh, the performance of the industry as well as the company over the last four to five quarters, uh, 500 crores in FI25 looks highly unlikely at this point of time. That's all, uh, I'd say, but, uh, the, of course I won't give a revised guidance at this point of time for FI25. Okay, got it. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Jatin Chavla from RTL Investments. Please go ahead. So, hi, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions. The first question is just a clarification. Uh, when you said out of this 550 crores, KPEX 300, 350 crores is revenue facing and uh, an asset turnover of 0.7. So, broadly with the KPEX that you have done right now, about 220, 250 crores is the incremental revenue possible. Is that so it's uh, 0.7 on 550 crores. Okay, 0.7 on 550. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my second question was, uh, I just wanted to understand a little bit better, uh, you know, how your sales uh, process happens in the domestic market. Because I think you largely sell through distributors, right, uh, and not directly to, to your clients. Correct. So your pricing negotiations then happen with distributors or they happen with the clients? It happens in conjunction with the distributor, the our team at Tarsons and the client. Okay. So even though you are selling through distributors, so you have your sorry, I was just clarifying that even though you are selling through distributors, you have your own sales team which is going out and meeting clients. Correct. Correct. Absolutely right. Okay. So, see, uh, my limited understanding uh, of the business is that this is right now, you know, for the most of the consumers, a class C kind of purchase. And given the large number of SKUs that are involved, uh, you know, pricing does not end the criticality of the product. Uh, the customer, end customer is not so concerned about pricing. But uh, does the distributor kind of, is he price sensitive? Or, you know, would he switch? Uh, if there is somebody who is offering a better price? So, um, as you said rightly, it's always been a Class C product, uh, but it's been a Class C product because of uh, ease of procurement and, uh, uh, you know, the availability of uh, various uh, companies offering this kind of a product. But uh, it's as critical as anything else which is used in a lab. But it's always been down the value chain compared to other things which are utilized in the lab. Uh, for the distributor, it's, uh, will, the distributor will only switch to another brand because let's say he gets, um, price X from Tarsons and uh, let's say he gets a 5% or 10% lower price from another brand. Uh, he would only switch to that brand if that brand has equity in the market because uh, uh, the distributor is not doing much to uh, build the business. The distributor loves selling brands which already have a uh, base in the market to sell. So buying something 10% cheaper which you would uh, sell at 20% uh, of uh, something which you would buy at 10% more expensive is something the distributor has to take a call, you know, what is more viable for his business. I'm still kind of slightly not able to understand what is the role that the distributor is playing, right? Because if you are reaching out and you are... Yeah. Yeah. The 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 role that consumable products. These are consumable products. We are... Uh, uh, to do a revenue of, I don't know, maybe 200 crores, we would probably, uh, the distribute, all our distributors combined would be raising invoice, maybe more than 70, 80,000 invoices in a year, or maybe more than that. So it's not viable for us to raise, uh, invoices which run into maybe 80,000, 100,000, 200,000 invoices in a year, uh, to be able to reach every corner of the country, to be able to control the credit, to be able to control dispatches, to be, uh, to have viable dispatches, uh, from uh, one place, you know, which is Calcutta. So to efficiently reach out to ev every part of the country, every user, this model is the best model. And distributors are there for a better supply chain management. Distributors are keeping one month to three months of stock and, st and they can deliver the stock in one day or two days time, right? Which we can't, right? And right. second is that distributors may be receiving the money from their end customers after 90 days or after 120 days, but they are paying us in 60 days time. So this is better for us uh, in terms of supply chain management. And typically, uh, what is the distribution margin that, that is there in the industry? 
I think about 15, 15 uh, odd percent uh, should be the gross margin, so 10, 15 percent gross margin, depending on the product line actually. They deal with so many SKUs that there's uh, the median margin should be 10 to 15 percent gross. Understood. Understood. And when you are looking to acquire uh, entities globally, uh, are you looking to kind of uh, replicate the Indian distribution model? What are what are what is the aim when you are looking to acquire something globally? See, uh, I uh, I cannot say because the, what we've done in India has been a culmination of so many years, twenty, thirty years, without understanding uh, the market scenario or the market conditions. The reason why we are acquiring is because we do not know those markets. If we knew those markets as well as the Indian market, we would have gone directly as Tarsons. So the, in a, the inefficiency of information about those markets is uh, prompting us to acquire somebody who understands those markets better than us and ride on them to be able to grow the Tarsons business. So uh, once we acquire, only then we would understand whether what we have done in India is replicable or not because every geography, every country has got its own culture, own costs, own challenges, which we are not aware of. And right now the overseas model is, uh, at least in your own brand, that there is an importer who imports and then he sells to distributors in that market and then that, that distributor sells to the client. Is that right? Okay. Hello? Yes, sometimes the importer is selling Sorry, sir, your audio is not clear, sir. May I request you to come closer to the speaker Am I audible? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Sometimes the importers sell directly to customers as well. So the chain can be imported to distributed to customer, and sometimes it could be imported to customer. Understood. And and in the ODM, it will be obviously uh, to whoever owns the brand, he will be just doing contract. You are basically doing contract it's manufacturing for him. It's the same channel, just that it's not in our brand. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Shiyan from Sparks Group Company Limited. Please go ahead. Thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity. I just uh, have uh, several questions. Uh, so the first one is um, uh, in the beginning you mentioned some uh, macro and macro challenges in the past uh, two years. I just wondering, are we the beneficiary uh, of COVID? Um, and now it's more like the normalization after that. Uh, yeah. So the first question is this, and uh, second question is also on the outlook uh, on next year. Um, if you could uh, talk uh, talk about about the domestic. Uh, and so the overseas demand um, and uh, the overall uh, guidance if you have any. Sure. Uh, so for the first question, um, I think uh, COVID was beneficial to most companies, including us. Uh, while our company was already running at very, very high capacity utilization levels, and as I explained uh, uh, in one of uh, the things in the micro level, in the company level, what we could not do very well was to be able to execute projects through the challenges of COVID with our suppliers in Europe. We couldn't bring on uh, capacities um, on time to be able to generate higher revenues, so we actually grew at a uh, very modest 28 29% buyer for buyer for the two years of COVID, which I, which I say 20 29% is a great growth number per year, but for COVID years, it was much lower than what the industry average was. So while we took advantage of COVID and grew our revenues, we could not grow it as well as the industry grew it. And uh, that's how it is. And uh, today in the, uh, in the post-COVID world, I think uh, we are trying to build our company to be able to uh, be prepared for the next phase of growth, which should uh, come in after this uh, industry lull is over. Ms. Yan, does that answer your question? Oh, sorry. Uh, do you have any specific uh, number on the guidance? No, we don't have any number on the guidance for FY25. We expect the industry to revive and the conditions both in the domestic and the market to get better as time moves on, but no no specific guidance. I see. 
uh, and because uh, earlier you mentioned about the cost in uh, Europe uh, is getting higher, but we don't have uh, manufacturing capacity over there. Is that correct? Correct. We don't. Okay. And uh, one last question is, um, uh, I think one of our uh, uh, key point uh, key point in the industry is uh, the shift from glass uh, to plastic is happening. I just uh, wondering because uh, some uh, in some countries uh, the government uh, banned uh, or limited the usage of plastic uh, because it's not ESG friendly. Um, uh, so in terms of the alternatives, uh, do we see any threat? No, we do. Taking initiatives to be more responsible in our production. Sir, so you're not audible. Yes. Any question? Yes, sir. Now go ahead, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Please. Uh, now, yes. So, um, I think uh, at this point, there is no alternative. Uh, but uh, all the plastic companies, including ours, have been taking measures to get more responsible in our activities to be able to reduce uh, the plastic waste as much as possible through uh, various initiatives. And I think uh, the plastic industry for life sciences is here to stay. But uh, we would all have to get proactive in the way we conduct our business and uh, manage the plastic waste over the next years. So you mean the threat is limited? I, I feel there's no threat for this for 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 now, you know, at this point of time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sandeep Abange from LKP Securities Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, this is Sandeep Abange from LKP Securities. So uh, my question is to uh, Rohan. Uh, so, just wanted to have a clarity on the sequential glue growth which we have seen. Uh, so, are we seeing this uh, growth to continue in, uh, you know, uh, in the next two quarters? Because, uh, uh, like, if you see sequentially, our uh, Q3 and Q4, uh, Q4 is the strongest. So, are we expecting uh, same uh, same growth uh, on a sequential basis in the next? quarters so definitely uh, we we expect to grow and get better in the next two quarters um, uh, generally q3 is the slowest quarter because of uh, um, the international business slowing down in december and this year we have um, you know the festival season also which has come in november which generally happens by the end of october or finishes everything finishes by q2 but in spite of all these things, we expect uh, uh, growth in Q3 and for, for the growth in Q4. Okay. okay. So that helps. And uh, one uh, clarification on the previous question, Mr. Raj, uh, like you mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, your capacities are somewhere in the uh, mid-70% uh, uh, capacity utilization. Is that uh, number correct, which I uh, can So, uh, what we did about 280 odd crores as an average, uh, you know, in uh, uh, FY23. And uh, if I take that as 75% and I multiply it by 100, it comes to about 370 odd crores. So, what I had mentioned was that at 100% capacity, we have the ability to go up to 360 odd crores, you know. So, uh, without this 550 crores of capex, our company was uh, had uh, the ammunition to do about 350, 360 crores, not more than that. Okay, okay. And is there any current capacity utilization percentage which you, you would like to mention? No, that's what I mentioned. I believe that we are in the same range of about uh, 75 odd percent uh, and that is a broad range which I've given you since we cannot go uh, down to SKU by SKU, it's not, uh, it's, we cannot calculate it. Right, right. And uh, one last question I had on the delay in the, uh, you know, import of some of your machines because uh, as far as I remember last, uh, these machines were supposed to be delivered uh, 
like in the previous quarter but it is getting right. delayed for more quarter so can you specify some uh, particular reason uh, for for the delay so these are these are actually complex machines um the product or the part coming out is the same what we already manufactured or similar but the the complexity of the engineering and the electronics and uh, everything else put together is it's quite critical and uh, the process what we do is that before these machines are shipped out there is a factory acceptance test in in the suppliers workshop or uh, factory floor so we send uh, our engineers uh, from uh, you know uh, india to his uh, place for the factory acceptance test so the more critical machines which you are going to it's not as simple as just going there for two days and uh, signing on the approval sheet and they shipping out uh, with these complex machines there come observations there come improvement areas there come areas where we would need changes and those changes and those implementations then take time both in terms of commercial negotiations because of the change of scope as well as of as well as a change in the engineering or the change in the electronics what we need so it's an evolving process and a very common process uh, which is nothing new or different or uh, you know challenging or uh, anything to you know uh, worry about so it's just a part of the process and as we move up the value chain such things would be uh, very common Okay, so can we expect uh, the machines to be delivered uh, like you mentioned in in the December, uh, and uh, you'll be starting to commission your uh, capacity? So we, the reason I said December end was because the, those machines are on the water. They have already been approved and signed, and they are you know in, on the shipment process. So unless uh, there is some shipment delay, uh, you know, technically it has been cleared and it is uh, shipped and about to you know reach. Okay, okay, that's really it. Thanks, thanks for your time and uh, good luck for the next few quarters. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next question is from the line of Ranveer Singh from Novama. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, uh, I have uh, uh, just I needed clarity on the capex side. So. Uh, 550 crore capex. You said 60% would be on capacity build-up and 40% on product pipeline, right? Yeah, approximately that much. We don't have exact numbers, but that would be um, uh, somewhere in that range. So that I couldn't understand. The, what is the product build-up there for 40%? Are you talking about working capital uh, related to product? No, new new products. So new product. So 60 uh, so 60% so so for the capacity building. Uh, capacity expansion and 40 percent for the new product. For capacity expansion, there are many products are there like pipe tips are there, cryo valves are there, storage valves are there. Many are many products are there for which we are you know expanding the capacity like centrifuge tubes, 15 ml, 50 ml, and in the new product segment we are cell culture products and other products. No, so that I want to understand. This is what is the nature of that 40 percent um, spent on product pipeline because. Either it's a R and D side you are talking about, or it is about that uh, just um, uh, producing these products, new products there in that facility. That uh, that constitutes. Mm, it's producing those products in the new facility. Okay, so this is in nature of working capital basically. That would be rolling then. It's in nature of capex. We'll be buying equipment and machine to produce those products. So it's an investment on machines and molds. Ah, yeah, machines and molds. Okay. <coughs> Okay, fine. And secondly, that recently that GST related issues. Now this is all settled, or still you have uh, some uh, litigation pending there. So this is related to you know transition of excise duty and VAT uh, to the GST in 2017. They changed the notice. <coughs> we appeared for that, and uh, we have given the clarification. They issued the order, and we are going to appeal for that. Okay, so this is all already settled. That um, entire amount which was claimed, or this is still part of it, or, or we believe that it can still be reduced from uh, the current demand which has been raised. So situation is in our favor. Uh, we have impulse, we have stock and the uh, and the excise duty and other things. We are eligible to get the credit, but somehow uh, all the import credits and other things they they disallow allowed that. And uh, they issued the order for us, and uh, the, all the credits are legible claim credit, and all the bill of entries are there. And we are very firm, and we believe that once we appear, once we submit those papers to the adjudicating authority, uh, it will be settled. 
Okay, but this should not be a significant uh, amount, even if that uh, comes uh, to our head. No, it's, it's about to be 66 lakh rupees. Okay, okay, fine. And and uh, the last one on product launches. Uh, how many products, new products we have launched in first half, and what uh, what are plans in there for second half? So uh, we have launched uh, certain products in the bioprocess line uh, in Q1, and we look to launch um, not launch, but I would say enhance capacity of uh, certain products in Q2. But in Q1 of FY25, we would be bringing in the remainder of bioprocess and cell culture products which are planned in our capex. Okay, and and for FY25 also, you have some. Um, uh, uh, in terms of product launches, you have uh, some products in pipeline which could be launched in FY25. Uh, so uh, we have uh, product launches which have already been incurred by CapEx but would be getting launched in FY25. The major product will be the cell culture. Mm -hmm. And to your understanding, once that in Q1 FY25, this Panzala uh, plant starts, how long it will take to optimize? So first year, what kind of capacity utilization we can uh, expect? Four, four years to, uh, to maximum five years on complete ramp up of capacities. Okay. So that will be gradual, like uh, so first year maybe 20%, yes. 50%, 20% and then. Yeah, may not be it may not be as equal as all four years, but yeah, yeah, I think as time goes by, the increment should be higher. And you know, if we go with the average acquisition route, then this this uh, this time period can be reduced. Uh, what kind of acquisition? Uh, in organic acquisition, which we are looking for in Europe okay. and US kind of countries. If we get that kind of opportunity, then the revenue will be extended, and uh, this time period can be can be reduced because we are able to utilize the capacity in a much faster way. Okay. And this year only 150 crore is yet to be spent from the capex announced earlier. So out of 550, 400 crore you said yes. has already been spent, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I think still their uh, borrowing side. I think you have to increase the borrowing. Uh, that that uh, because internal accrual uh, doesn't seem to enough uh, to meet this 150 crore. Again. Or or would you want to do this? Sir, we have, a, we, have, we have limits available uh, and we can utilize those limits. Apart from that, we have a strong internal accrual. We are making about to be 6 to 7 crore bits per month cash accrual. So that will be a sufficient enough to manage all this kind of, you know, capital. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, that's all from my side and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Rohan for closing comments. I take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining the call. We will keep updating the investor community on a regular basis for incremental updates on your company. I hope we have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with us or SGA, our Investor Relation Advisors. Thank you once again. Thank you. On behalf of Ambit Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.